One in 500 employees use their company device to access and consume child sexual abuse material. This is of course horrific numbers, but it's also a reality and a risk where you, as an IT professional, and part of the VMware community can act and create a difference. My name is Hannah. I will be your guide on this session, how technology can protect businesses and be a force for good. We will deep dive into the risk of child sexual abuse material and the impact it has on both society and businesses. We will reveal some fresh new data on the topic. We will hear real life stories on how companies have tackled this. And we will have a conversation on why purpose is a matter of resilience and absolutely business critical. Together with me in the studio, I have two real change makers, Anna Boyström, CEO of NetClean Technologies, and Marie Bernamubai, Country Director of VMware Sweden. Welcome, Anna and Marie. Thank you. Thank you. So, Anna, you operate in an area that can be quite difficult to talk, talk about. Can you elaborate a bit on this? Yeah, I know that the problem of child sexual abuse and child sexual abuse material can be really hard to, to talk about, but it's so important that we keep talking about it and that we don't look away. Uh, Netlin develops software products that protect businesses' IT environment against child sexual abuse material. And uh, I think that most people have an experience of child sexual abuse material, or, or at least have heard about it in relation to the internet. And uh, one might think that it's a rare, uh, rare thing uh, and uh, that you don't come across it that much. But uh, uh, I think it's uh, an underestimated risk to businesses. Mm. And uh, we have done uh, a first of its kind survey uh, on more than 1,000 IT professionals. And we assessed the risk they face of child sexual abuse material in, in the corporate environment. And we found that 64% have experienced a case of child sexual abuse material within the organization uh, the past five years. And 64%, that's two-thirds of the respondents. Mm. And mind you that most of the uh, respondents had also uh, experienced a repeat in incidents in the same organization during the same time. Mm. And does this go across all businesses of all sizes in all countries? Yes, they do. I don't think that the, uh, the problem of, of child sexual abuse material or the consumption of child sexual abuse material appears in a, in a sp special society or a special company. It goes through the whole society regardless of religion, uh, country, culture, etc. Uh, but when it comes to businesses, I think that if you are a mid-size or large business, you, are, you have more employees and of course that elevates the risk. Mm. And do businesses understand the scale of the issue today, would you say? I would say no. Uh, I think that uh, you said in the beginning that one in 500 uh, employees had used the corporate asset to, to consume child sexual abuse material. And that is a real risk and I think the risk is underestimated, especially today when we live in, in a remote uh, uh, world, world or, you know, we work from remote uh, and uh, I think that's also elevating the risk. Mm. 
And how do you see that, Marie? Do you think that companies, what are the risk perspective from a broader point of view? Yeah, I think it's uh, especially after pan uh, post COVID, mm. uh, it has changed the risk surface drastically with the distributed workforce and devices all over the place and applications. And I also think it's harder for IT security personnel to, to identify the risks. Uh, we have a, a recent study that shows that one third of the IT security personnel lack both knowledge and visibility into an application, how it really act, acts and behaves. Mm -hmm. And then it's harder to detect when something deviates and, and is an anomaly. So it's a lot, it's a complex uh, world out there with a huge risk surface. Yeah, and I can echo that. Uh, when it comes to uh, findings in our, in our customers' environment, we know that most alerts are triggered in the system when people are working away from the physical mm -hmm. workplace. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. Uh, so now we can also see that this actually affects <laughs> the people that are working with detecting these uh, threats and, and issues. Uh, and one recent report we just launched, the uh, Incident and Security Threat Report, showed that over 51% of the IT security personnel also experience like burnout syndromes mm. because the speak, uh, peak of events in, in co combination with the complexity in how to try to, to analyze and understand them is really burdensome for, for the people that mm. work with it. Yeah. Mm. And how are companies tackling this today? Do you have some examples to give? Yeah, well, I can give you a real case example on, of, of a company that uh, protects business IT environment and at the same time safeguard children. So uh, this is uh, a customer of ours. They use NetClean Proactive, which is a detection tool. And it detects unknown child sexual abuse material that is classified by law enforcement. And this specific customer is a public sector customer. So they had an alarm in the system and the alarm uh, went to the uh, security uh, team and uh, they verified the alarm uh, and found that it was a couple of files that were uh, classified as child sexual abuse material by law enforcement. Mm. Uh, so the software created a report and the report was sent to, uh, to uh, law enforcement and law enforcement started uh, an investigation and they did a house search on both uh, the, uh, at the house of the suspect and at the workplace. And in that uh, uh, house search they found other devices uh, and including a mobile phone. And the further investigation showed that uh, there were newly produced content in the mobile phone and it was depicting uh, the abuse of two, two young children. And uh, the investigation showed that uh, those two young children was uh, his partner's two children. Mm. And uh, the further investigation also revealed that the, the suspect had had a conversation uh, over Skype uh, with another man who was directing the abuse of the two young children. Uh, so uh, uh, an alert in a corporate environment could, uh, in that case, resulted in uh, safeguarding of two children, uh, enabling them a better future and also sentence to two uh, men to prison. Mm. And so it's, I mean, our customers, they can have a substantial positive impact to society. And uh, this is just one of the uh, examples that we have from our customer stories. Uh, and I don't hear them all, of course, and I don't think that there are any success stories in this case, but mm -hmm. because every, behind every image and behind every video, uh, there is an, um, a suffering and a lifelong trauma of the, the children that are depicted. But businesses, they have a real place to take in, in, uh, in creating a brighter future. Mm. So putting a really urgent kind of sense of urgency to the topic as well, that it, there is a window of opportunity to act now. Definitely, mm. definitely. Mm. We have heard some of the data already, but let's deep dive a bit into more the awareness within our thousand IT professionals and have a look at what they view. We spoke to more than a thousand senior global IT professionals in five markets, the United States, United Kingdom, Sweden, Belgium, and the Netherlands. So what did we learn? The industry remains profoundly unprotected against child sexual abuse material. 
child sexual abuse material is present in almost two in three businesses. 64% of the organizations had had an incident in the past five years. Professionals in the industry know it's a problem. 87% had heard about the threat it poses. But even they underestimate the scale of the problem. 70% estimated that child sexual abuse material was present on fewer devices than research shows. A majority of senior IT professionals believe that the problem will get worse, not better, in the coming year. Is URL filtering enough of a response? 73% said it isn't. 90% said that they're considering specific protection against child sexual abuse material to address the issue. The purpose-driven case for tackling child sexual abuse material remains strong. And the majority is willing to take action to keep it off company assets and help stop child sexual abuse crime to create a brighter future for children. So what are your reflections on the survey results? I start with you, Marie. Yeah, it's horrific numbers, of course, and a tough subject to discuss. But I can also feel a lot of uh, hope uh, that we can actually, with the help of technology, create something good. Yeah, I can second that. I mean, the numbers are horrific, uh, but everyone I talk to, regardless if it's business leaders or intel from law enforcement, or if it's our own research, uh, the, 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 uh, the summary is the same. This problem will not go away. It will, it's here to, to stay and we really need to take care of it. Mm. So I think we have a joint view on the issue. We have a joint view on the solution or parts of the solution. But where does really NetClean fit into the VMware offering? Yeah, I would say it's a perfect match. Uh, our mission is to deliver a trusted foundation to accelerate innovation for our customers. Uh, and one big part is our any, Anywhere Workforce uh, story, where, where we enable uh, end users to connect uh, in a secure and fast way to any application from any device on any cloud. Uh, and in that uh, environment, when, when NetClean's technology comes in, whereas uh, VMware's technology also is based on to always look at the known good uh, behavior uh, of an application, um, and then look for deviations in that, exactly what, what NetClean does, uh, and to be able to, to integrate that in an already existing uh, management platform for your uh, workforce, distributed workforce, uh, it, that's really good. So it doesn't mean that you need to add on, but you can only integrate already in your existing environment. Yeah, I mean, together we, we, make, uh, we make doing good easy. Yeah. I think it's, easy, it's easier for, for the whole security operations to operate uh, in, with our integrations. And it's quite a fascinating story how this small Swedish company became a VMware partner. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, well, we, we are a Swedish company uh, and uh, I was introduced to uh, Pet Gelsinger, the former CEO of, of VMware, through Hans Westberg, who is now CEO of Ryzen. But before that, he was CEO of Ericsson and, and I got to know him there. Uh, so uh, uh, he introduced me to Pat and uh, Pat and I, we... Uh, we, uh, we understood quite early that we have a common value ground in both companies and we have a strong belief in tech for good. So it was a perfect match, as Marie said. And uh, uh, with that, we got further introduction into the VMware uh, community and uh, we got connected with Sanjay, Sanjay Poonan and Shankar Ayer. And uh, now we are a technology alliance partner with integrated technologies into Workspace ONE and Carbon Black. Mm -hmm. And how can all the companies out there be sure that they need this type of solution? Well, uh, as I said before, uh, most alarms in our customer uh, installations occurs when, when people are away from the physical workplace. And in this uh, uh, time of, of uh, uh, distributed workforces, etc., the, uh, uh, the urgency to, to also detect child sexual abuse material is uh, elevating. Mm. And that must be something that you see quite clearly as well, Marie. How has the pandemic changed the risk environment? Where are we today? Yeah, 
obviously drastically changed uh, yeah. the 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 pandemic it changed the like IT environment overnight and especially regarding distributed workforce we have one customer that that told me that well it took them 5 years to get thousand of their employees to be able to work from home remote and then it took them five weeks to get the rest of the 20,000 employees to work from home. So obviously an immense shift from, from earlier to have uh, the majority of your IT within control within your data centers and now you have distributed uh, workforce everywhere, devices spread all over the place and at the same time also the shift of of applications being consumed from cloud services, you have microservices, you, you have data everywhere. Mm. So, so it's uh, much harder to, to, uh, to, to keep control, which obviously exposes companies uh, to much further or higher risk mm. uh, and, and broader attack surfaces. So I think from the immediate threat response when, when the pandemic uh, hit us to, to make sure that everyone had secure access, now it's moving over more to, to see how can we have a more sustainable uh, security strategy that could actually support the distributed workforce going forward and the complex IT environment we are working in. Mm. And what are the key areas to focus upon to kind of eliminate it or reduce this risk, but also from a human connection perspective, would you say? I would say to, to, to really work on a holistic uh, IT security strategy. Uh, recent study shows that over 70% of enterprises lack a cohesive security strategy. Uh, and uh, VMware ha has our security strategy based on intrinsic security, which means that you build in security into the applications and into the access point rather than bolt on uh, additional security yeah. products. Uh, and, and we base that also on the framework called Zero Trust, and Zero Trust is a branch industry uh, framework that has been used uh, for a couple of years now. And, and, and to explain what Zero Trust is, you need to understand also the traditional uh, view of IT security. So the traditional security was most about that when a device was inside your corporate environment, uh, then it, it should be trusted. That was the, like, the belief of the traditional security. Whereas today, when you have devices spread all over, you have uh, applications in cloud and micro -segment segmentations and so on, uh, it's, it's much harder to, to get that uh, control or it's almost impossible. Traditional security also based uh, uh, the fact on, on uh, that your identity couldn't be compromised and also that uh, all users acted with responsibility and care. Um, and of course, that, that, that was what we still want to believe that most of them do. But we see that in this distributed workforce and also with the accelerated digital transformation after the pandemic, the attack surfaces has increased. The cyber attacks has become more sophisticated. Mm. So, so it's not that people necessarily need to act with with, with uh, not uh, on purpose, but mm. they can be attacked. Mm. And so the zero trust means uh, that, you, that, that um, uh, trust is a vulnerability. Mm. So trust no one and verify everything. Yeah. And for me as a leader, that's a bit horrible because I do believe that trust is the key for building a, 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 a successful mm. organization. Absolutely. But you can also say that let then the te technology handle that part uh, to, to verify the, the security pieces so that we can focus on creating connection between people, which creates empathy and trust, which is so important. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you. And that's also a perfect match between our solutions because we only detect uh, when uh, already classified image uh, is detected and that classification is, is made by law enforcement. So when law enforcement classified child sexual abuse material, uh, every image and video get a hash signature and we detect on that hash signature. So we don't look at any other kind of traffic in the system. We only detect when an illegal image is, uh, is found. Mm -hmm. And I think to have that kind of uh, sort of safety 
uh, net to, to, to rely on. I think that's really positive for, especially for the security team working with the incidents. And also you don't have to be exposed to these images because the hash verification, you can verify the hash itself. You don't have to look at the image. Mm. And I think that's also a really important thing because I know that uh, what you have said to me that the, uh, the stress mm. is uh, extreme high on, on the people working in security at the moment. Yeah, so, so, so to summarize, I would say that invest the time and energy to create a holistic uh, security strategy built on strong authentication, intrinsic security with built-in security, and also emphasize the fact of the collaboration between the different parts, like mm. the IT department, operations, the security, because that will uh, uh, fasten the investigation time reduce the risk, reduce the cost, but most, maybe most importantly, also reduce the stress and complexity that these people are encountered with today, mm. Yeah. Mm. which also is so important. Mm. Interesting. Building in safety to protect people uh, and mm. help. Yeah. yeah. We can see from the report result that the purpose-driven case for tackling child sexual abuse material kind of keeps on being strong. What are your view on the kind of trend of purpose-driven organizations? I mean, is it only a trend or is it actually critical for, for driving an organization, driving a business? Well, I, I think it's, it's critical for businesses to have a purpose if they are going to, to exist in the future. I think it's, uh, it's critical to be purpose-driven in order to uh, attract both uh, young uh, talent, but also investors. And, uh, uh, I think it's absolutely necessary that you tie in the purpose into the core value of your business uh, because authenticity is so important. And I don't know about your experience there, Marie, but uh, I have a feeling that uh, young people are looking for uh, purpose-driven companies uh, they can work for. Yeah, and especially, and I think you can tell that from interviews uh, with, with younger talents that they almost shift the interview around. So they ask me a lot of questions on, on our values and purpose and how we actually, pure examples on how we are living our values. Uh, so I, I fully echo that. Yeah, and I I'm, I'm, I'm can feel I'm so, I'm so grateful that I can run a company with such a clear power, uh, a purpose. Mm -hmm. We do, uh, I mean, we do take care of business IT environment, but uh, we also improve uh, life. Mm -hmm. And you are also leaders, both of you. What is your purpose? Why do you go to work every day? Um, I go to work because, you know, when I, when I first met the founders of, of NetClean, uh, they they showed me a technology that could safeguard a child. And uh, I was uh, so intrigued by that and by the fact to scale it. I mean, if we, if we can scale our business, we can, we can uh, improve uh, millions of children's lives. And that is really what is driving me uh, to find a scale uh, in our business models and in, in to get our technology out there in order to... to to improve life of children. And I think that's also not just driving me every day, but it's also driving NetClean and, and the NetClean team every day. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and, and I'm also super proud to be part of a, of a, of a very value-based company such as VMware that has the, the mission to create tech as a force for good. Um, and, and what you can actually enable of human potential with technologies help. Yeah. So we have one customer, for example, the largest healthcare region in Sweden, which we are helping with, with a secure uh, um, sign-in system so that the doctors and nurses can spend less time on logging into troublesome IT systems and more time actually taking care of the patients. And we have so many witnesses from personnel uh, at the hospitals that say that their work has become so much more fun and meaningful, and that makes me proud. Mm. We have had some really interesting conversations today, hard conversations about a difficult topic, but also very hopeful conversations. What are some final messages you want to send to our audience? Well, um, when I speak to CISOs or executives, uh, um, I, I tell them, yeah, this is a hard topic to deal with, it, hard conversations to have, but it's really, really easy to take action. Mm -hmm. I think we need to act now. We need to act with care and we need to act together.
Thank you so much for watching in on a conversation on a topic that is hard to talk about, but a problem that is not likely to diminish over time, especially not in a post-pandemic landscape. We have had some really good conversations today about risk, about the impact on businesses and society, but also where you as an IT professional really can act and create a difference. But it's time to act now and we need to do it together. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.